Pain is a subjective experience and as such is often increased by anxiety and or stress. On a basic level, it is the body's early warning system. Think about how you learn about touching something hot. My daughter was three to four years of age when she touched a hot burner on a stove that had recently been turned off. She remembered that event throughout childhood and into adulthood because that memory was imprinted in her memory so that it wouldn't happen again. Stress decreases inflammation in the short term, think corticosteroids, but may lead to an increase in the risk for inflammation in the long term. Refer to the text for more information. Pain also increases inflammation. This can be from an injury, but can also occur in relationship to increased muscle tension from chronic neck and back pain. Both stress and pain involve the neural network increasing signaling to the brain and lead to an overall overload of the system. This is why individuals with certain personality types seem more prone to disease. This is especially important when we think about the difference between chronic and acute pain. Acute pain is related to tissue damage and inflammation, and although its perception is made worse by anxiety and stress, the problem is short-term and goes away once the damage is healed. Chronic pain is more persistent and does not involve tissue damage even though acute pain from a back injury could be the original trigger. However, just like with acute pain, stress makes chronic pain worse and treatment involves addressing lifestyle factors that increase stress and or inflammation within the body. So patients with chronic pain are often referred to chronic pain clinics where clinicians talk to patients about how sleep, mood, diet and exercise or lack thereof may be contributing to their perception of pain. I could spend time on each of these, but I'm going to highlight two of them. First of all, lack of sleep increases the amount of inflammation in the body, and due to the crucial part that it plays in memory, it is also key in terms of how you function at school and at work. For example, lack of sleep will make it very hard to recall the information you need to pass a test. Diet also plays a key role, with refined carbohydrates such as sugar and processed wheat increasing inflammation. They also lead to spikes and dips in glucose levels that can contribute to the stress response and overall energy levels. To recap, when individuals do not practice good self-care, they are at risk of both short and long-term problems with stress, inflammation, and disease. Wow, that seems complicated and in a way it is, but the good news is that when we practice good habits and teach our patients how to do the same, we can all improve our long-term health, improve our mood, and decrease overall stress. 